Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about torque, which in physics we use the Greek letter tau to represent. And because it has magnitude and direction, we put an arrow above it to represent it as a vector. Okay, so draw your attention to this picture right here of a hand applying a force on a wrench that's trying to rotate a nut. So this is the nut, and you can see this little black dot represents what we're going to call the fixed point of rotation. This means that the nut can rotate around it, but it cannot move up, down, left, and right. Now, there are two um, different vectors that are involved in this problem. The first is the force applied by the hand, which we're going to draw coming out of the point of application and directed along the arm. So we'll call that F for the force. The second vector is the position of that force, which is going to be represented as an arrow that goes from the point of rotation to the point of application of the force. We're going to call that R because remember R is the appropriate variable for position in physics and also you can see that this kind of makes a, a radius for a circle um, that's going to come from the rotation of this wrench and nut. Okay, these vectors both lie on certain lines. The radius lies on a line that we call the radial line. The force lies on a line that we call the line of action. This is real juicy stuff. Now the reason why we want to think about these two lines is because there is always going to be an angle between them, which we are going to call that angle theta. And that angle theta will let me take this force and turn it into a parallel and perpendicular component. Remember with vectors, you can always treat the vector as the hypotenuse of a right triangle made of what we call components. Now this bottom component I'm going to call F parallel because it's parallel to the radial line. This other component I'm going to call F perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the radial line. Now F perpendicular is opposite of the angle. So when we try to find its amount, we're going to use the magnitude of the force, which is kind of the hypotenuse F, times sine of the angle. If you're unsure of how that works, pause the video and draw a right triangle to prove this to yourself. Okay, great. You're so smart. Now, let's talk about the equation for F parallel and why we don't need it. Imagine what this force does. It's trying to pull the nut down and to the right, but the nut is fixed. Therefore, there's going to be some tension in, or, you know, some kind of force that's coming from the bolt that doesn't let it move down and to the right. So we don't really need to know its equation because it's going to get canceled out. Instead, we focus on this perpendicular component of force, which is going to cause the nut and the wrench to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. That component of force multiplied by the amount of the radial position is our torque. For most problems, we'll find that F perpendicular is F sine theta. And this is our general equation for most torque problems. Later, we'll talk about how torque as a vector is really the cross product of radius and force, which almost always gives us this same equation. But for now, let's just go ahead and not talk about that. All right, see if you can use your new equation, tau equals r f perpendicular to solve this problem. Press pause and give it your best shot. Okay, let's see how right you are. Now, in this problem, you have a radius uh, that we're going to convert to meters, 0.25 meters, and you're going to take this 17 newton force and split it up into a parallel and perpendicular component, and notice that, oh yeah, 37 degrees is opposite. So I can go ahead and write this as RF sine theta. At that point, you just plug in your numbers, 0.25 meters times 17 newtons times sine of 37 degrees which should give you 2.557, so let's say 2.56 uh, meters times newtons, or it's more appropriate for us to write newtons times meters. That's probably what you got, because you're probably really... Now, at this point, you should go back to the class Schoology page and try the basic torque problems that are um, aligned with this assignment. Good luck.